Hello, welcome to Lightwave's layout interface. Now I'm assuming that the people watching this have absolutely no experience with Lightwave whatsoever, so we're going to talk about the very basics of layout and then the very basics of modeler. So let's go ahead and get started. When you first launch Lightwave's layout, you're going to notice that you're now in its environment. And the environment comes equipped with a standard light, which is a distant light, and one camera. Every scene that you have must have at least one camera and one light in the scene. The next thing you want to do is know how to navigate through your environment. And there's a few different ways to achieve that. If you look in your top right, you have three different navigation controls. If you left click, you have your dolly control. And the center one is your orbit control. And the magnifying glass is the zooming tool. Now these controls do have hotkeys, and if you hold down Alt and Control, that is your zoom, Alt Shift is your dolly, and Alt left click is just your orbit tool. Um, when I first started using Lightwave, I, it became a habit for me to use these tools up in the top right corner, and I've continued to do so. But, you know, it's just whichever is better for your workflow is the method that you should stick with. So let's talk about uh, the tabs up here. These tabs, if you left-click on them, generate new tools on the left-hand side. Let's say that you had uh, a set of tools that you use on a daily basis, and you want it to have your own tab up here with all of your tools in it so that you wouldn't have to keep navigating through them. Well, uh, Lightwave is very customizable, so we could just go to Edit and choose Edit Menu Layout. And under Main Menu, I'm going to select that and choose New Group. And you can see up in the top left that it generates a new tab. Now to put your tools in that, that would be under the Command Menu here. So we could go under Effects, and let's say that we're always changing the backdrop color. We could select backdrop color, then select new group, and choose add. And you can now see that under new group, here we have backdrop color. So let's just hit done. And if you select backdrop color, you can see that it takes us into that panel. Let's hit OK. And if we go back into edit menu layout, we could simply select new group and hit delete to get rid of it. So let's talk about basic animation now. Under the modeler tools, we could simply go to the geometry tab and add a sphere. And it brings up the numeric options panel where you could uh, customize it. But we'll just leave the default settings for now. Let's hit OK. And as you can see, it populates our 3D sphere right there. So to make this ball move, you can see down here that we have auto key turned on. If we simply take this time slider here and move it to frame 10 and we'll move it down the x-axis, you can see that it draws out your motion path here. So if we go back to frame 0 and hit play in the bottom right here, you can see that it moves automatically. If you want to delete a key, simply go over it, hit delete, and then hit OK and then it snaps back to its original position at the origin. To set your own uh, key, go to Auto Key here and uncheck that. And let's go to frame 10. And we'll move it down the x-axis. And hit Enter once, and it brings up the Create Motion key. And you're seeing we're creating a key at frame 10 for the, all the position, rotation, and scale channels. And hit OK. Once you hit OK, you can see that our motion path is now drawn out. So texturing can be done inside layout or modeler, and that's also just a personal preference. So to add a color to this ball, we could simply go up to the surface editor, and under sphere, we could go to color, click on it, and choose any color we like, hit OK. You can see that we have now surfaced our ball. And there's a lot of different features here, so you can get the desired look that you're looking for. 
And we also have a nodal interface, which is getting into more advanced topics, so I'm not going to go into that right now. But that is how you add a simple color to your objects. Let's X out of that. The next thing I want to talk about is these groups down here. You have your objects, which is selected now, and you can see that our current item is new sphere object. We could rename that by going to um, Okay. You can rename that object if we generated it in Modeler. So we're selected with objects, and we also have bones, which is getting into more advanced topics. If we click on lights, you can see that it automatically selects our only light in the scene, and cameras, it automatically selects our camera. If you want to modify the settings for any of these, simply select it, and then hit the P key. That brings up the object properties, and in here you can adjust any of these settings. It's really uh, handy to get into knowing the hotkeys of the viewports. So if you tap the 1 key, it'll take you into the back view, 2 is the top view, 3 is the right view, 4 is the perspective window, the 5 key, which is very useful, will take you into the light so you can then move your lights inside them by looking at your objects. The 6 key will take you into the camera. So it's at 4 to get back to perspective. And the last thing I want to talk about is how to render out your objects. So the best thing to do is hit the 6 key so that we're in our camera view. And let's say we want to get a different angle from inside our camera. We could go to Modify, See under Translate, we have Move Selected, which is the T key. All the, the little letters aside of the spelled out um, name is the hotkey. So we could hit T and right-clicking, oops, we're on our lights, make sure that you're actually on your camera down here. Right-click will move the camera up. We can just hit Y for Rotate, and that'll move the camera down. T and just you know move it to wherever you want. That's fine for demonstration purposes. And since we don't have auto key on, remember to make a keyframe for your camera at frame zero. Up here we have the render tab. We can go to render globals. And this is where you can adjust all your settings. So for um, very basic purposes, we could you know have it be HD, 1280 by 720. And we could X out of this. And under Render, Render here on the left, go to Render Frame. And you can see that very quickly, let's hit Continue, there is our rendered out image. And now if you want to save this out as a JPEG or any other file to show off to your friends, you can go to File, Save RGB, and here you have all these different files to choose from. So those are the main essentials of LightWave's layout. Now we're going to jump into Modeler and discuss the basics of that, and have fun with it.